Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, J.K. Amazi, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Brothers, anyone can talk the talk, but not everyone can walk the walk. And that's why here at Porn Reboot, where we do walk the walk, I'll be sharing every few episodes some snippets of success stories and testimonials from brothers who are in our implementation intensive and in our free groups And they're going to be sharing some of the results they've been getting so that this can further inspire you to take action on all the different tips and techniques that you learn while listening to the Porn Reboot Podcast. Enjoy. Hey, everyone. I have Ryan here. He just came out of the e-connotation program and he's willing to share his experience and share some wins as well during his time. And Ryan, can you introduce yourself and tell us how you came across the program. Yes, of course. Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Shelbany. I'm 30 years old. I'm from Switzerland. And I came across the program basically by running into JK on the YouTube channel of five years ago. Nice. And were you going through anything particular, like you were struggling in certain areas in your life before you decided to join the program? Yes, exactly. I was really struggling with my self-esteem, my relationship with women, my relations in my family, with my dad, with my mom. I'm doing way better now, thanks to the program, including, of course. And I'm way more comfortable and at ease with women and girls. It really feels good. Oh, nice. I guess a couple of Windsors that we could dive into. So I was going to ask you the next question. What was like, the out of those three things you shared, what was the major win that you're like, man, I was struggling with this. And then boom, I'm like, I, I feel like I'm a different person. So can you expand a little bit, perhaps in the one of your family or perhaps the women one, which one do you feel was like, man, I want to, sh- this one gets me excited because I was struggling with this so long. I will say to be more global and not to sound too, I will say philosophical. I was t- struggling with hope, basically. Like before joining the program, I, I was quite hopeless because I felt like there was no way out of this addiction, this compulsive behavior. I felt trapped, lost, and just basically, yeah, hopeless. Now, man, I think that's a lot. That's what we started. The hopeless is because we have so many uh, failures trying to get control over our sexual behavior. And that's what causes the hopeless feelings until you start, obviously, doing any system. Mm-hmm. In the case, the reboot system, we start stacking wins, right? We notice we talk, we preach that a lot. Of, hey, yeah. stack, brothers, stack your wins, brothers. How did you overcome that? What tools did you use to like see a little bit of hope and then consistency in your reboot? Yes, thanks for the question, which is very good. I would say among all the tools I we have at our disposal, I've used a lot the, I will say the irrational, the irrational beliefs exercise because I, I still have to, but I specifically had to train myself to, I will say, to think more rationally in a more... I would say clear headed fashion. I was liking that. And I would say the dialogue, the dialoguing exercise was really, I would say a game changer because it, I would say taught me to be more aware of my faults, my feelings, and to be able to understand my addiction better, way better. Awesome. I love that. And what, so looking back now, what were your irrational thoughts and you challenged them with a rational belief? What was the main one that you would struggle with? As for example, when it comes to my finances, I was always telling me that I was a loser. I was basically never be able to get to a place where I will be financially independent. I will never be able to land a job, a full-time job, and I will keep struggling for my entire life with finances and with financial independence. To be honest with you, I'm still working on it. Of course, that's as far as my financial capital, but I'm more hopeful, I have a plan, and I am more driven, bold even, to achieve my goals in this area. That's okay, brother, as long as you, it's crazy how before you were just like this overwhelming feeling of, fuck, I'm a loser, I'm I'm not confident, I can't do it. To be able to see that 
And honestly, you don't really have to change anything in the beginning because you just bring it to your awareness and then your belief systems gets challenged. And then once you're in that point, that's when you, okay, you know what? Your subconscious is saying, hey, you want to take some action here or what, buddy? <laughs> and then you do it, right? Start implementing the exercise is very helpful. I, I think a lot of brothers use that one as well. And that's great, man. Again, don't minimize your win. That's a huge win because now you're taking the action and and you're a young man yourself, right? But be able to do that, man, and not go, let waste another year with that same mentality and belief system. It's mm. yeah, man. awesome, bro. Thank you for sharing that. And so next question, brother, did you attend any of the reboot coaches? I know like Dr. Jessica, Milan, or Dr. Rankin, those calls. And if you did, which one did you find most useful for your reboot? To be honest with you, I strive to attend all of those at the beginning, basically for the first few months of my being in a program. But I think if I had to pick one, they are all amazing coaches, of course. I really appreciate your, their work and their support. It goes without saying. But I think the one I preferred the most was Dr. Rankin's session. Because right. like Dr. Rankin is like a wise man, like a father you will have to have when you are struggling even more with your addiction, personal issues, and so on and so forth. And I think he's like a beacon of intelligence, weirdness, and humor as well, because I think he's very talented to give amazing advices. Of course, I would say talk about dark topics, very hard ones sometimes, but with a touch of humor, which I really appreciated. Nice, bro. That's, I know what you mean. He's a very cool guy to talk to. Just like, mm. it is sometimes you're just listening, you don't even ask a question and you're there. Damn, I learned something. Exactly. I'll implement that myself. He's a cool guy. People watching here, Dr. Rankin is the man. <laughs> so uh, thank you for sharing that. And next question, brother. I know you, you've you been in a program for, I would say a couple months. And before, I believe you came from the public group, right? Is that correct? You came exactly. From like, mm, that's group. right. Yeah, I remember that. And before that, besides like the beliefs and the family and the dating, can you expand uh, a little bit on the, I want to pick on the dating part for you right now. I was going to say, let's pick on that. Or yeah. the the confidence of women, right? Because I know a lot of men struggle with that in the beginning of the reboot because of the obviously pornography use. So how did that start off for you from, man, I can't look at women to where did you end up at this point in your reboot in that case? I think for like most porn addicts, I was struggling with it because I was, I kept objectifying them, putting them on a pedestal as JK will put it. And it really, it was really de debilitating. And I was just too intimidated to talk to them in a rational, like cool headed and really like with no agenda passion. And uh, it was really painful to me not to be able to relate a healthy passion with them. And when we understand our addiction, when we are on the path to rebooting, we learn to see them as basically as normal people where, with their struggles problems and so on and human, we can right? relate more like a human right like, like really like humans for humans. exactly that's a true yeah. human here exactly. that's, that's amazing bro i'm glad i asked you that question because that's the key thing you're like even though i know I'm one of all of us or some of us oh it's late this and that but you're missing mm -hmm. the key components sometimes like intimacy and human exactly. connection are better lasting more consistent feelings that you could get rather than that one or get <laughs> But it's cool, man. I'm glad that you got that experience because you're right. Like, why are we putting, we pretty much saying we devalue ourselves enough to be like, oh, I'll do anything on your behalf. Uh, just mm. to get something from you. We're taking, we're trying to take from, in this case, women, we're trying to take something from you rather than providing or just giving. I, I, always, I always tell brothers, hey, I, I always have this mentality of giving and receiving, right? Never yeah. give it, give and receive. Exactly. And you, you want to give, I receive it. I'm never going to say that. And... No. And if I can add anything, I think you mentioned Orestes like many times with other brothers in the testimonials, is that when you're a porn addict, when you struggle with porn addiction, you're acting weirdly, right? A little bit weird, a little bit off. And I think girls peek on this, right? They oh, feel yeah. it. And of yeah. course, it can ruin entire interactions before. Oh, yeah, definitely. I do. And yeah, I do say that because uh, it's all in a subconscious level because there's 
they pick their women. Is there, just women in general have this wish. I'm like, this guy's weird, creep. Some vibe. I'm like, <laughs> exactly. Like, right? <laughs> and being able to be like relaxed and a woman, because in this world, right, I live in the Western world here in the US, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, it, it wasn't their guard here. But yeah, when they meet someone where it's, hey, how you doing this and that? Oh, good. You just, you could leave, be indifferent. That's very rare nowadays. That's weird. Mm-hmm. It's, oh, man. But hey, man, I'm glad you had that experience, bro. That's a major win. I thank you for sharing that. And I'm asking you this question now. So let's say there's a brother here watching this and they're like, man, you know what? I can relate to Ryan here, man. I struggle with these things. But they're like on the fence. They're like, man, you know what? I, I don't want to invest my time or energy or money. What would you tell that brother? What would you say to him? I can only recommend this brother who is struggling whether or not to to the program to think about to move over like carefully the upsides to investing on himself because at the end of the day it is his life and if he's been struggling for many years most cases with such a de- debilitating problem he should fix it he should take the time to invest in himself and even in a program imagine like between a year and a half and two years we get get rid of it completely for you for the rest of your life. So that's a good investment. It might seem to take some time to reboot completely, but compared to the 15 years, 16 years, like 20 years we've been acting out, that's nothing, really. That's a very good perspective. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's funny because we tend to on like the future, oh, two years, damn it. But no, like exactly. you can see change within the first three months. And in this that's talk, a very good point. Definitely. Yeah, the count days here, we don't recommend that. But the mm-hmm. fact that you share your wins in the group, getting validation in the beginning, I, I believe it's important. You don't really have hope in the beginning that much. There's a little speck of it, but it's not as like big as when you're consistently doing the, the, the program. Mm-hmm. So you're doing it for 90 days, right? You're like, oh man, you notice that your mindset's different. You're a little more confident. You're able to uh, hold a conversation, whatever that is that you were struggling with. Like you, we tend to like, now, just focus on the future so much sometimes, but hey, put in the work, you're going to see the results, right? It's a guarantee. It takes courage to even face some of the things that may come up for someone. But Ryan here is a great example. He's super honest, super engaging in the community of Facebook. I wasn't surprised when brothers see progress because they're relating, right? Having a community, be able to share brothers, it's a huge thing. So mm-hmm. I got just talk to you off there, but <laughs> sorry, so, go ahead. You want to say something, Ryan? Oh, yes, please. Uh, just for the sake of the program, because I've been, because to be honest, before joining the program, I had been trying to implement by myself. But to be honest, getting into the program, having a community, having feedback from brothers with love, respect, but tough love sometimes because it is necessary. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. I think there is nothing to replace it. That's true. And uh, if you join one of the Tuesday light calls, you will experience tough stuff. <laughs> yeah, we don't fuck around here. Hey, I like that. Final question, brother. Yeah. How would you describe your overall experience with the program in one word? What would you say? I would say resilience. I like it. Thank you. All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching this interview with Ryan. It's an amazing brother. And I hope to see you guys in the next interview. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out of control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is if you're not sure where to start, but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, the Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, 
You want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man, and free yourself from shame, guilt, and underachieving? Then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five-star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom.